welcome to another weekly update. I hope you're doing well. And it is officially summer holiday season at Microsoft. Um, there are some things to talk about this week, but not that many, um, if I'm honest. So, um, yeah, it's a it's a quieter week. Um, I mean, the CrowdStrike stuff, notwithstanding. Um, it's really last week's news, wasn't it, Al? But, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, not that many things happening. A couple of interesting things to talk about, though. Um, So let's get into it. The first one is very much in the wheelhouse for Microsoft Teams developers and is a blog post um, on the dev blogs, uh, which is a Microsoft owned blog, um, all around pre-pinning Microsoft Teams meeting apps using the Teams admin center. So what is this? Okay. Um, For a while, you've been able to have apps in meetings. And for a while, you've been able to pre-pin apps in Teams. So from the Teams Admin Center, you can choose the apps that go on the rail down the left-hand side for users, and you can pin those apps as well. Um, So if you had like a corporate app that you want every user to have and you always want it to be in the top left-hand corner, that's totally a thing you can do in the Teams Admin Center. The thing here that's new is the ability to pin uh, Microsoft Teams meeting apps inside meetings. So this is the blog post, um, and they're talking about it. And uh, this is how you'll be able to do it in the Teams Admin Center. Um, You'll be able to take the meeting extensions and put apps into it as pinned apps. Um, So that's good. Um, There's a few things I do want to say about this. Like overall, this is a good thing. Don't get me wrong. Um, This... uh, this is clearly a, a useful thing for admins to be able to set up, you know, where there's like a corporate policy or a decision to use a particular app for all meetings, then you want, clearly, you want the ability to be able to pin that for users so users don't have to think about it every time. If you're trying to grow usage of a particular application, asking users to remember to pin it to every meeting um, is really tough. So pinning it automatically for users, really good idea. Um, what I will say is that like, this stuff kind of comes out in drips and drabs. It's been a really long time since um, we've had meeting apps uh, and we haven't had the ability to pin them. So whilst it's good that this is here now, I am kind of can't get that excited about it because I'm kind of like, well, maybe that should have been there from the beginning, but uh, maybe not. Maybe it takes some of that user feedback to drive some of that stuff. The thing I think that is less forgivable <laughs> is that for for right now or maybe that forever, I can't really tell, um, the you can't pin uh, those apps for channel meetings or meetings that get created using templates. Now, depending on whether or not how much you use channel meetings, that's either going to be an issue or isn't an issue. I don't understand because I don't know the innards of how Teams works, why when you say you want to pin a particular app for meetings, it doesn't impact all meetings and only some meetings um, and why it doesn't impact channel meetings. Templates, one I can kind of get behind maybe, um, a little bit, maybe not, because I don't know that you can specify meeting apps in templates. I'm not sure there is a workaround there. Um, but yeah, it's kind of annoying, I think, that uh, this functionality isn't ubiquitous and available everywhere. Um, so it's kind of good, kind of bad, um, is my take on this. But if you've been waiting for this, um, then uh, you'll probably be pleased it exists, even in the form it exists, right? So um, that's now GA. You should be able to find it in the Teams Admin Center. Um, yeah, so that's all good. Uh, yeah, like I say, slightly tinged with a bit of, you know, it would be better if, you know, it did these other things as well, but we are where we are. Okay, so I said there wasn't that much to talk about. That's quite good because it means uh, we can go kind of elsewhere to get the feel for what the industry think about some of the stuff Microsoft's been doing. And for my next pick, I'm going to go to the directions on Microsoft blog, which is um, where Mary Jo Foley is at right now. And uh, somebody there, Barry Briggs, um, say somebody is an analyst at directions of Microsoft, but he was a former CTO of uh, Microsoft IT. And uh, so he's done an interesting blog post um, about what he calls agentic, not he calls it's become an industry term, agentic AI, um, which I think is worth a read actually. Um, I, you know, I hadn't really, I hadn't, I definitely hadn't heard the term agentic AI, um, but it's a, you know, you'll understand the concept when you read it, uh, the idea of, you know, agents performing actions using AI, um, that's not a new thing. And I think really that's Barry's kind of overall, um, theme here is that this isn't really new. It's doing what we've always done with things like workflows and, um, process improvements um, and it's using AI as a tool rather than a silver bullet I think um, if I could sort of very 
poorly summarise what Barry's written. Anyway, it's not a very long blog post. Um, I think it's worth a read. I think um, I, I think it's good to get other people's take on things. Um, and uh, and somebody like somebody like Barry from somewhere like Directions, they listen to a lot of customers and they get a lot of feedback and they understand what's going on in the industry. So I think it's good to have that kind of feedback from them. Um, so yeah, nice one. Uh, all right, last thing I want to talk about is a uh, is a funny kind of it made me smile anyway, and it shouldn't, but it's it's a good blog post anyway. And uh, how can you tell that it's you know it's summertime and, and no one's doing anything at Microsoft is uh, everyone goes on holiday. But the other thing that happens is Microsoft uh, take that opportunity as well to give some time to interns um, and to allow interns the experience of working somewhere like Microsoft, which, you know, as a, a software engineer, wow, what an opportunity, right? What an opportunity to really get practical hands on with the nuts and bolts of developing in a in a major you know, uh, software engineer, software engineering company that everybody has heard of. So very, very cool. And uh, one of the one of the interns this year has written a blog post about her experience. Um, and so I linked to that because I think it's a really interesting read. Uh, it's my summer experience as an SWE intern at Microsoft. And um, yeah, I thought this was really interesting. So Serena went into uh, the JavaScript and TypeScript tooling team um, for Visual Studio. And uh, and this is a blog post about her experience. Uh, I, she's a great photo over there. I, I've been to that sign. I think I've got a photo that looks very similar to that um, on campus. So Serena was based in Redmond on campus. Um, and it's kind of interesting to see what things um, interns get to work on, but also the process of how that works, you know, what code reviews look like, what mentoring looks like. Um, yeah, so I thought that was really interesting to read. I think it's a really good thing they do it. Um, because, you know, that how do you get that experience? Uh, internships are a great way to do that. Uh, really, really good experience. Um, and Microsoft also get like a whole fresh, you know, fresh thinking, fresh engineering talent. And also you'd hope they, uh, they get some uh, long term permanent employee recruits out of it as well. So, um, yeah, I thought that was really cool. Uh, I also like to see that Microsoft run a bunch of intern events as well. Um, yeah, around sort of the developer division and some um, some diversity stuff as well, which I thought was really cool. Um, so yeah, really good experience, really good write up of what looks like a really good experience. And uh, Serena actually ends with a kind of what I learned set of bullet points, which I thought was really interesting as well. Um, you know, as well as what she enjoyed and, and what she's doing next. So very cool. All right, I think that's everything I want to talk about this week. Like I say, kind of a slow week. Um, but if you're an IT admin, especially if you're an IT admin that does everything, you're probably thankful for a slow week uh, with everything that's been happening. Um, but yeah, plenty to look forward to, but we'll see what happens next time, next Monday, uh, whether, you know, when the pace kind of picks up. It tends to be around about this time. I feel like a bunch of people have made um, promises is a strong word. Commitments is probably also still too strong a word um, around things coming at the end of summer. And the end of August. So we will be on the lookout for those. They might sort of roll a little bit into September, but we'll see. But I do expect the pace to pick up kind of towards the end of August. So we might have another slow week next week um, before things really pick up, but we'll have to tell. All right, that's everything from me. Hope you have a good week, um, whatever it is you're doing. And I will speak to you again next time.